I was fighting in the $65,000 Kazo Cup edition against Mohammed, like the best player in the entire world, the Kuhn Clasher World Champion. These are the games we're taking a look today. So we're starting off the game for Hawk Rider, really aggressive. And Mohammed starts off like deciding to go in with a Bagaz on top of the Hawk Rider, which is a really good start for us since we got like a free shot, which is of course not a bad start. So I'm just gonna go for Guards Lock here, making sure we don't take any shot. Of course, this will allow him to get like a free King Deactivation. He decides to go for the Firecracker first and now going for the Ice Bird to activate King Girl. It's the best of free duel format so basically you can just use every single card once i'm using my ice spirit here on defense to just make sure i'm actually distracting here the firecracker and a really good rain of course Mohammedite is the guy to beat and also this is like of course the games i want to win the games i love to play this is why i'm playing clash royale for i want to compete against the best players on the planet and also of course i'm already kind of quarter for the clash royale world finals most also so it's kind of already a task if i'm like able to beat him in the biggest stage this year and we're just using a monk and he also uses the monk so this already shows this will be an actual an actually interesting mirror matchup with hawk rider cycle deck a deck which you kind of see a lot i'm just Decided to go for the guards here. He decides to go for his guards. I'm just gonna go for a lock really early before he's able to use his ability. And I'm just gonna go in for an ice spirit. He really could have ice spirit so that this monk doesn't get too much value. And I think right now I'm just gonna chill a bit. And I'm just gonna go in here for my hawk while he's using the monk ability, which I think is quite nice. I'm still gonna use my um EQ here because I thought this might get a shot and he had to drop guard, so it would have been a shot, I guess. And now I think I can just go use a lock here. And so far, we're doing a great job, and I'm like up a bit on damage. But of course, Mo knows every single matchup. He's currently, I guess, the pro who plays the most of like Clash Royale. He enjoys this game a lot. I don't know how he's enjoying this game so much since right now I feel like it's a really um bad day but of course like if you win a lot if you're playing really well if you get all the money in it's like a really great motivation thing so he's just gonna be really aggressive here with the monk which i think is the is something which mo likes to do a lot like being aggressive um in situations when you're playing troops behind this is exactly what we're doing right we are playing troops behind our tower with the monk and i think this could be kind of a mistake so this hawk i think gets now a shot i'm just gonna go for the firecracker to make sure it's just like one shot and now we're really even i think this could have been way way worse so i'm not really too unhappy about the situation and i guess it's okay he's just gonna decide to go and for his eq here so i'm just gonna go now for my uh, hawk rider here and now i'm just gonna go for pre-eq here he still needs to use an ice bird so we're still even like because our damage it's kind of spilled up. I'm just going to go in here for my guards. And this was like a problem, right? This is like absolutely huge. So he's going to get a pre fire quicker since he knew my bomb was on a cycle. And I was actually predicting this with, his, my, with my ice bird. But the ice bird was like one second too late. And he was able to get the perfect prediction. And now we're playing a matchup, a mirror matchup from behind, which is of course not optimal. I'm using my monk now. This time, of course, I can go bomb tower since I have it on cycle. And he's not going to overcommit with EQ because he knows, okay, he needs to be careful. So I'm just going to go in for my ice bird here. I'm just going to go use my firecracker in case he goes and guards at the bridge. And now I'm just going to go for my hawk rider here. I'm using my ability just to get some extra chip. Using my um, ability here. Using my ice bird here. Using also my uh, guards now, I think. I need, need to go for a lock. Now I'm just going to use my guards. And I was like, okay, I don't really know what to do, right? Because if I go for guards low, he's just going to get firecracker value. This is kind of a problem, right? So maybe I could have gone like for a bomb tower. I think I had it in cycle already back. So that was really bad. But I was like kind of also going in on the left side, right? I just wanted to make sure if he couldn't get a hawk on but he defended it really really well he used this elixir uh, um efficient that he wasn't able to um kind of panic there so we're just going to use another monk here right in front of that um i think right now i'm just going to use my ability here really good ability just to get some extra chip but i still need to get back from the 700 damage disadvantage which is of course not too great so i'm just going to go for my hawk rider here i think do i go for right now i'm just gonna go for guards here no i'm just gonna go for my hawk rider here i'm of course also gonna use most like an earthquake watch just gonna hope for one shot but my firecrack actually does a pretty good job here getting some chip damage but i can't go for my hawk rider since he has his bomb tone and down there from the eq back and cycle so i'm just gonna go for a monkey really good monk placement to be fair and he's just gonna use a guards but i don't really think i have like okay i'm back out to lock already so I'm just gonna go for Hawkwater here, tank the ice spirit. I'm just gonna use my uh, firecracker here. I was hoping the firecracker to splash the tower, but the firecracker is actually not splashing tower, which was really everything like, unfortunate, but of course, like also um kinda stuff which is also happening. And he's back to bomb tower since he had the free cut cycle on the map, otherwise he wouldn't have been back. So Mohammed Light wins the first game, and I'm kinda back with my 
Yeah, I'm back I'm back to the wall. So this is like the game which I need to win. Otherwise, I lost this bastard free against Muhammad Light. So this is like a really interesting deck choice, which you might not expect from me, right? This is like the first game, a really solid deck. A ton of people started using the Monk again because of the Firecracker and does really well against that. Rather than the Mighty Mine. And also the Monk is pretty good against the RG, to be fair. And it's also really spell resistant. So we're going to use a Firecracker after using a Bandit here. We're just going to let the Fire Squid go. And he's just going to use a Defensive Miner. So Mohammed Light is really known to play a ton of Miner Control decks. And we're just going to use a Battle Ram here in the back. And I'm just going to respond with my uh, Mother Witch here. And you guys could think... Wow, Martin Rare is playing Bridge Spam? You don't really see it a lot. But I think I showed you this like in yesterday's video, so uh, like a video two days ago, so make sure to check this video also out. And I love Bridge Spam. I think the potential of Bridge Spam is absolutely crazy and you do so well against this type of cycle decks because people also don't expect me to use Bridge Spam. So this is kind of what I like to do. And of course, Mo didn't expect me, otherwise he wouldn't have to not play minions. So I'm just gonna go for the He Spirit here. Just like kind of the pressure, he's just gonna decide to go in for his Fire Spirit. I think I'm just gonna go for Battle Ram at the bridge because I know I can. He goes from four minions, so I'm just gonna go for the Instant Mother Witch here and he knows he's kind of struggling. He needs to go for his Mighty Mine. I'm just gonna go for a Rage here. I think the Rage is still okay because now um, he still needs to commit something like to kind of protect the, the Hoggies to get Raged up from the minions. But I can just go in here for a Ghost here. And I guess he's just going to go Fire Spirit. And now he needs to go Defensive Miner. Um, and which kind of means we have like really good Alex and Ben. This is a matchup where you kind of always want to play defensive. You kind of want to play your troops in the back. And whenever you get an opportunity, you want to spam. When it's the Mighty Miner's Auto Cycle, you want to be aggressive. You want to get Mother Witch Value. You don't really want to get Predict. And of course, he doesn't have Lock anymore. This is important to keep in mind. He just used this Lock. And normally you like to use Miner and with Lock together, most likely Poison Lock. But he can't use a Lock. So his last card will be Snowball 100%. Because you don't use Barbarian. But of course, it could be also Arrows. But this is kind of like a minor poison control deck so poison snowball is kind of what you want to do in this type of deck so the mana which here is doing a solid job also of course the mortar is doing a great job on defense especially the evil mortar is really good against bridge Trim since you also got like the one goblin to distract the banner and so on we're using my heal spirit here in the back just to cycle and right now i'm just going to go for my magic arch here and look at the great magic archer lineup guys this is what we want to see i'm also going to use my barbarians here and the barbarians they're still pushing they're still counter pushing and also next up have the evil bob so i'm just going to go now for my mortar to go in like opposite lane because this mortar wouldn't go to the uh, this Batman wouldn't go to the mortar. I'm just gonna use my uh, bandit here at the bridge, and I think this will be like a really good bandit here. Look at the bandit, guys. This is crazy. He needs to go defensive miner, and we're just keeping up the spam. His mighty miner and his normal miner sort of cycle, so he needs to drop a musketeer. We're just gonna go for another magic arch here. I'm deciding to go for another Batman opposite lane, using my heal spirit in case he goes on for minions. And look at the magic arch, just absolutely shredding his tower. Bandit is also coming down just to try to uh, apply some extra pressure. And look at the magic archer. Mighty miner comes down, which means okay, the ghost will get a ton of value. So he needs to use another uh, another miner. And even if we're not, not even if we're not like getting a ton of damage all the time, we're always getting some damage. And we're also going for magic archer, some extra chip damage. But how the heck is he supposed to get damage, guys? How the heck is he supposed to get damage? Also, a really great smart play here. We're just gonna go also for the heal spirit. And now I'm just going to go for the bandit here really low. And he still needs to defend the barbarian. So he's always on defense. He cannot do anything. He needs to use his offensive cards. Like the mine I was saying. Always on defense. Which allows us to play really clean defense. And we're feeling really, really... um. So yeah, I think I'm now I need to use my Mother Witch here plus Evil Barbs. I'm also going to heal up the Evil Barbs and look at the um, awesome defense, guys. This was perfect Clash Royale defense. So also look at the Ghost on the right side. I didn't even pay attention to this game on the Ghost. The Ghost also chips away. I'm just going to go for another Battle Ram here. And he needs to use a Snowball once again. I'm just going to go for the Rage this time. I don't know if the Rage was that worth it, but I still think it was okay. Since look at the Piggies, just absolutely doing a great job. He still needs to play something, and I think this is always great, right? Right, he still had to spend something there, so it was okay. I think he's just going to use his ability with the Mighty Mine. I'm just going to go once again split barbs just to make sure. Next up, we got the Evil Barbs to get some more damage. I'm just going to go for a really solid Magic Archer. A Magic Archer this game, we're absolutely on point. And the Bandit is going to get a good dash. I was just going for a ma uh, Mother Witch to maybe get like a predictive stuff on the minions. And I'm just going to go for a Rage here. Really smart um, minor prediction on his end. Even if he didn't get the Magic Archer, he got the Heal Spirit to make sure the minions going to survive. I'm just going to spam once again a Battle Ram, which means 
He needs to spend the defensive mortar and he can't play it on offense anymore. And the only way he's gonna come back this one. He can't cap he can't come back with minor poison straight up, right? He needs to get a mortar connection. And this is why we did that. So Manovich wasn't really well placed. He just goes in for a mortar, but he misclicked it this time. He needs to go also for a poison spell on top of this. I'm just gonna go for a really great bandit here, get a ton of value. He needs to cycle back to a defensive mortar, which is completely fine. I'm just going to go for the heal spirit here, and we are going for barbarians here, and this will be the one war. Now we're going for the deciding game, Morton Royale versus Muhammad Light. The deck decision will be now a really clean and easy one, I would say. Like, of course, they're like the two best decks right now in Clash Royale, which are most likely Hawk White and Warrior Giant. I played the Hawk White in the first game, and now I decided to play Warrior Giant. And Muhammad Light plays a really interesting deck, and I think like a really smart deck pick, and this is what makes Mo so great. Of course, the gameplay is absolutely perfect. His experience is unmatched currently with all the matchup. He's like practicing, not just like practicing games a lot, decks a lot. What he makes, but what makes him so great is like practicing matchups specifically. So when you're playing Warrior Giant, even he knows he has a bad matchup. An example of a deck against Warrior Giant, he played this matchup like one or times already. So he already has like the advantage that he played more often against Warrior Giant um, with his deck then you kind of played with your Royal Giant deck against his deck. So this is kind of the thing, right? So you will always have a match. He will always have the advantage of experience in this type of matchup. Even you will have a matchup with experience. So he's kind of knows the tricks, how to play you in certain situations. And look at this, look at the start, guys. This is an absolutely amazing Phoenix. So this Phoenix gets so much damage and this of course, of course, this is so, so awesome. So um, we're just going to go in like here for my Llama Jack. I think at this situation, I could have just maybe went for just like a naked Voyager and the bridge. Maybe this would have been the play. I think this should have been a play. This is like also what I'm kind of like always doing sometimes, like just like rewatching my gameplay, like I'm doing live with right now with you. Um, to kind of see what I could have done different. I could have just gone for a white giant at six Alexa because if you would have gone for a prince, I could have easily went for like a fisherman and just killed the prince for the possible elixir trade. Now I played my phoenix in the back and gave him a free rascal split and I still need to defend the rascals and he will, he will be back to a spam cut soon. So that was a huge mistake. I mean, not really a mistake on paper, but like a kind of mistake on like getting a good situation and kind of throwing the situation away because now you guys kind of see, okay, we're kind of back at an even spot. So this was really, really not optimal. I'm just going to go for my Barbarian Brawl here. So Barbarian Brawl was actually like really lucky for us. And I think right now I'm just going to go in for my Royal Giant. Um, and I think this Royal Giant was pretty solid overall. So I think, do I go for a Fireball here? I think I'm just going like, to go in and get like some ton of or like some Royal Giant hits. And I need to say, when I see this matchup, his last cards will be, I think, like Goblin Bowl, because yeah, it's a bait deck, and his last card will be the Evo Barbs, or like the Barbs in general. And I can tell you guys, it can be really spicy, since Rascals are so annoying. I don't really have anything against Rascals, I kind of need to fireball them. And if I fireball them, the kind of problem about them is, um, I think it's like one shot. It's like, then, then the barbs get value and I can't really go in and Dark Goblin gets a ton of value. So I kind of can say that the rescues are annoying because I just have a bang. But if I would have had like, um, if I would have had like something, um, okay, this by the way, like getting really, really close. The Eastbird coming in clutch, really, really perfect defense. And um, if I would have had like Log, of course, the match would be way easier also against the Prince in some situations. But just like in general, I would say the rescues getting so, so annoying. We're still having 1k damage. We're like having... 1 minute 50 left into this game and I'm just deciding to go for my Phoenix in the back. But his rescue split makes it annoying. He now is just going to go for the Barb split and he will mostly go soon for a Dark Orb in the middle, which makes it so, so annoying. So just going to go in there. I'm just going to think I'm going to let go because I don't really want to overcommit for Bane Ball, right? And I need to be so, so careful because one over overcommit um, just actually destroys the game. So I'm using my Fisherman here. I know he doesn't have a big spell. He just has hours. So playing defensive, sp sp spamming our troops and stacking our troops, of course, it's really helpful in this type of matchup. I'm just gonna go for my e here, and this was a mistake, right? So we're kind of taking a look at this huge mistake here. Um, I think we can just like kind of go back here like a bit on time. Okay, guys, so, so once again, a situation, this e was really, really bad because if I would have played the e a bit earlier, I would have been able to go on top of the Prince, maybe on the Raskits, I could have got a great like lock on the left side, but right now I kind of need to overcommit a lot. And look at my Elixir, guys, look at my Elixir. I need to go also for Fisherman. He decides to go for Raskits. I don't have any Elixir and he kind of knows that. So, I need to go for a fireball. Of course, he's waiting for the fireball. I still need to go for Barbarian Bro. I need to get, let the stuff go here. But we're somehow still in this game. But it was, of course, not really too great. I'm just going to go now for 
Do I go for my Llama Jack? I, I feel like I can't really go for Royal Giant because his rare skills are always there and always getting so much work. And remember, I need to have the Fireball Boy to go directly into the Barons. Really great um, Dark Goblin Burn. Of course, he decides to go also opposite lane to provide even more aggression. I think right now I'm just going to go in for my RG, but he decided to go in for a third, third Goblin Burn. I played really, really bad skeletons. I could have played them on the right side. This was kind of the throw I made. And you could arguably say it's a throw, but it's kind of like... How hard is it to play the deck? Just like the Rascal split, then the Barb split in the middle, and then just like the Dark Goblin to snipe up troops. And this makes it for me so hard. What am I supposed to fire? Well, the Barbs, the Rascals, or the Dark Goblin, and always the pressure you can apply, right? And I miss up one, one Elixir card. And you're always saying like, what Elixir cards? You can do whatever you want, right? It's just like one Elixir, but this one Elixir cost me the game, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you guys don't want to miss any type of pro content just like that, kind of reviewing the best games in the world, and I would say I'm out. Thanks for watching. I wish you a ton of good luck in your mission to get to be the best players in the world, and I would say I'm out. Thanks for watching. I love you guys. Goodbye.